Hi guys, my name is Peter and today I would like to demonstrate to you a little bit my snow material and what you can do with it. So let me switch to this instance, one of the instances of this material. You can see here the rock and quite an ugly diffuse texture on it. Let me manipulate the parameters a little bit and you can see as I raise the amount of snow it appears, starts to appear. And as I raise it more, it actually starts to grow on the, you know, up. So it starts to grow up. I don't know how to express this better, better in English, but you can see that on the sides there isn't, there is nearly no snow, and it appears on upper side of, of, the, of the mesh. So this is something which gets you close to realism. And there is a tessellation. And it's not working just perfect, we would say. Let's make more passes. Yeah, just one. Something like one would be great. Yeah. So it's more high quality. More polygons there. But yeah. So you have to be really careful with tessellation. I would have to dramatically improve the algorithm of tessellation to make it really look realistic, because this is not realistic, of course. This is not the way how snow would fall on it. <laughs> but still, when you do a subtle amount of tessellation, it actually looks good, and I will show you this right now. Uh, okay, my GPU is, again, very slow. Sorry for that. Okay, I guess it loaded now. Yeah, sorry for this, I have uh, only one gig of graphics memory, so works pretty bad. Need a new GPU. But yeah, take me let, let me take this instance, I will bring it to my second monitor so you will see it. See the actual screen. So here we have uh, this mesh, which is really nice from Epic Games, and it already has some snow on it. And again you can see that the snow appears on the upper part of the uh, mesh. And let me switch off the tessellation totally so it won't appear as we increase the amount of snow. But you see that you can get more and more snow when I increase the uh, snow mount variable parameter. And what is also cool is that the normal map of the bricks is not present on the on the parts which are covered by snow or it is present by what but really like not much so you can see here this is this is a still a brick but then when you get more snow it starts to actually appear like uh, just just a snowy surface but here of course in the lower parts you still have the actual normal map of the brick Or yeah, partially you don't, but mostly. So this is this is my algorithm, and of course there are a lot of uh, variables which you can adjust. So we have a fall off, which basically defines the color difference between the snow and the uh, base texture. Then there is this normal under snow factor, which does which basically uh, regulates the thing that I was mentioning right now. So, if you really make a lot of snow, the normal map would disappear, uh, the normal map of the brick, but you can adjust this by adjust by changing this normal under snow factor that I have in my shader. And yeah, you can play with these parameters a lot. So, if I just print it, you, this here, you can see that this is quite a lot of parameters. And this is okay because, you know, it's not that difficult actually. You can figure out what, what are they responsible for when you are making the material. Or when you are looking at a tutorial that I will do in several days, I guess. But yeah, the cool stuff is that uh, if I turn back the tessellation, so now it's, now it's on, and again, if we increase the amount of snow, now the tessellation is off, and this is exactly what I want. So. One of the variables that I have here regulates how much snow there is there needs to be in order to start the tessellation factor. 
uh, the tessellation to start to work. So if I increase normal, look at this. Now it starts to grow. Look. And as I mentioned earlier, with this subtle tessellation, so when you don't have a big factor, uh, big tessellation uh, values, it actually appears like a realistic snow on, on the surfaces. So here the snow also appears. Of course, if you would increase it more, it starts to get out of control and it doesn't look real anymore. Well, partially it looks real, but you know, look at this. <laughs> so you are interested in keeping this until you, you know, make a better algorithm that I have. Better material code, let's say. You're interested in keeping this uh, quite low, the tessellation factor. But when it is low, it looks pretty gorgeous. I mean, look at this. And if we go to wireframe, you can see yeah, there is quite a lot of polygons. And of course, you can play with this, changing the tessellation passes. The one of the variables that I have here. But yeah, this is the snow material, and you can apply it on the guy, for example, again. Yeah, and this is also cool that with this all these materials, uh, all these material instances, sorry, you can have one material. And for example, one instance, so I can apply it to this also. And you can have a map where which you want, you know, sometimes to be more snowy, sometimes to be less snowy. Or you have a dynamic weather effect, for example. Yeah, so the weather changes and the snow starts to fall. So you can regulate only using one variable the amount of snow in this sense. So let's say, okay, this is just, oh, sorry, this is just normal situation and then the snowfall comes for example and here we go everything gets covered by snow and you know even this kind of surface and if I apply this to the cube this is not of course this is not the best algorithm again but the snow basically grows so if you have subtle values for tessellation it, it looks rather realistic and then the last uh, thing I would like to show you is that I have site snow amount variable here, so it is right here, site snow amount. And what it does is that it says, okay, no, it, it doesn't say, but yeah, we say, okay, we want to have snow not on our top, no problem. And for lower values, like this, this variable works perfectly. Yeah, there are still some leeches, but it works, let's say. Uh, here, right now, it also regulates the amount of snow on the top, but yeah, it shouldn't, but you get the idea. There is still work to do, but uh, for basic usage, so if I just bring it again, oops, sorry, it's again slow. Um, let me see, where was it? Yeah, here. If I bring it to second screen, yeah, so the amount of snow on the sides has been regulated here. So yeah, this is everything I wanted to show you today, guys. This is kind of a cool material, I like it. I know there is a lot of work to do, and yeah, the, the material itself is looking like this. It's not really big, actually, but yeah, some stuff has been done here. And I will make a tutorial, because uh, I made it straight from the material I made in first tutorial, which you can find on my channel. Uh, and I played for a couple of hours with it, uh, you know, regulated some parameters. And I came up with this. Not a difficult one, you know. Some tessellation stuff, normal map computation, and no magic, no really cool maths. Just some, you know, good, good parameters and compu uh, computations. So yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, stay tuned for tutorials and some other showcases. And see you next time.